Is the immutable backup effectively a replacement for old school tape? I mean, are, are, is this kind of where we are? Uh, is this kind of almost a back to the future uh, approach to... Uh, to I love that analogy. Uh, you know, because it is it is funny, right? Like tape, tape is immutable by definition and many still use it. Uh, I mean, it, it can burn up in a pretty terrible fire, but you know, once it's removed and it's put in a vault somewhere, you cannot change that tape. We see this as not just a replacement for tape, but it is like an evolution because tape has always suffered from being a linear way to write data to a very slow medium. Um, it would be being disc based. You know, the, the issue with discs is unlike tape, they're plugged in, they can be written to, they're magnetic. There's many ways you could break them. We do realize disks break. We do realize that there are crafty people out there who can who can manipulate data on disks. So we've kind of gone out of our way to overly secure the hardware to create a tape experience without any of the tape frustration. So I love that question because one, it's never been asked before. So I always love a new question. But uh, two, it, it's a good way to think about it, right? Like this is the evolution. You should not be writing data to tape anymore, especially if you're a large enterprise, because you're just never going to get the data back as quick as you need to. That's why we've created this kind of solution is we know there's an expediency that's required for ransomware recovery. Yeah, so is this it? I mean, is this is this ransomware proof? This is this is the uh, the state of the art and 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 essentially you know, the game is over. Well, you know, I'd like to think so. I think everyone at Object First would like to think so too. Now, obviously, I have to give the caveats, right? There, there will always be the day zeros. There will always be those, those clever cats who figure out a new way to get in. This is why we talk about zero trust data resilience, three, two, one, being able to segment your environment, having multiple landing zones. I'm not as concerned about Utpi being ransomware proof as concerned as I am about Utpi being, you know, located on a beach somewhere near Florida, right? I live in Florida. We get hurricanes every year. It floods. And if there's one thing that any hardware hates, it's water. Um, it's always important to consider the worst case scenario, right? If you're, you have a power outage, a network outage, you get hit by a terrible flood. There is nothing that Oopi is going to be able to help you with there, especially in a case of recovery. But from a ransomware proof perspective, we are continuously third party testing this with outside agencies that will give us any gamut of tests to ensure that we are basically cashing every check that I've, I've put out with my mouth today. And we also, you know, we focus on specifically that one use case of keeping data immutable, keeping it secure at all costs and, and ensuring that even the most crafty person couldn't get in. So an example I always like to give is when it comes to, you know, calling our customer support. A lot of bad actors that are trying to get into the, the largest, top most money making enterprises they will call customer support and pretend to be a customer. That's a great way to get information, especially if you can spoof that, that human being that you're pretending to be. Now, with us and other smart vendors, they're turning to more validation that will occur when those calls happen. It's not just, hey, I'm Anthony. I live in Florida. Okay, here's, here's access to you know, our support, and here we're going to give you some information about your account or whatnot. We actually validate on both ends. So if you call our support, our support person has to validate with you that they are who they say they are, and you have to validate with them that you are who you say you are. And you know, it's all kind of proprietary in the back end. And I'm I'm not going to share all of that with you today, but we went out of our way to be paranoid in the best way to make sure that the hardware, the software, and the, the personal angle isn't compromised when it comes to ransomware. Yeah, this is uh this is this is fascinating to me. I, I particularly am intrigued by the by the business process you need to start thinking about with regard to how long you're going to maintain immutability effectively or, or, yeah. or you know, what are, what are you hearing and, and seeing with regard to current clients in terms of how they're coming to, up to speed around that? I mean, you know, there's this kind of instinct to want to keep everything forever, but obviously that doesn't right. scale in this particular model. It, it does not. And uh, when I started uh, over two years ago now, uh, some of the first prospects we were talking to in our beta had never worked with the beautiful storage before. And it was fun because we were doing math like real time. Okay, you have, you know, 74 terabytes of data. If that's your full backup and you're going to a 128 box and you keep your data on this box for two months and you have 
30% change, you're going to max that out. You're not going to be able to write all of that. So we need to shrink the window or we need to add a second node into your cluster to figure it out. And the math is always fun. Well, if you're a math nerd, the math is fun. If you're not, it's nightmarish and you know, make sure to have a calculator with you. But it has been an interesting conversation that we've had with a lot of our customers is they haven't really thought about this. A lot of folks haven't thought about how long do I actually keep my data? And you know, we talk about OOPI as that primary landing zone. You have to have multiple places you keep it, whether it's tape or it's cloud, there needs to be a long-term place where you keep things for longer than your two month immutability on OOPI and then you retire it off because you, for compliance reasons, right? Like this goes beyond just attacks and security. There are legal and governmental reasons to keep data for years on end. So we always recommend, you know, as a ransomware focused company and a security focused company, data that lands on OOPI is the data you need to recover when ransomware hits. If it's not useful in a ransomware attack, get it off OOPI, either shrink your window and, and focus more on that new fresh data and keep a good latest copy or expand your cluster so you can keep a little bit more, but don't keep the stuff that you're never going to restore except for a legal or compliance reason, because that's not what we're about. That's not why we're here. We're here to keep your new data fresh and ready to recover at a moment's notice. And and as you said, you know the 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 attacks are relentless, um, and and obviously they're they're probably well aware of that. Um, and and you know everything we see here at Solutions Review is the attacks are only going to get more sophisticated, particularly at the uh, at the individual user level and and some of the vulnerabilities that you described earlier. But but who in the organization should be should be thinking about this sort of thing, and how should they be thinking about it um, in terms of just practical advice? That's an excellent question, and I I kind of fall back on myself for the answer. Is you know I work at a start. Object First is a startup. You know we started when I was at the company. I think we had uh, less than four United States employees uh, to start with, and I wore many hats. And in that time, I learned to really empathize with specifically the Veeam admin and the Veeam, the Veeam user, because as I started to talk with them, I realized they're just like me. They're wearing way too many hats. Uh, and unfortunately, they're not scaling the way that a startup does scale. I think we're at 150 employees now, so I don't have to wear as many hats, but they do. And that's the challenge. They're being asked to do so much more work. So for me, it's a matter of what is your frustration with what you're doing today? And what is your confidence? that what you're doing is enough to recover. And again, it's a little bit of math. If you look at your environment, you look at your backup infrastructure and you consider that zero trust data resilience architecture I showed you and you said, oh, we're not quite there yet. Like what's the confidence that you could actually recover that data? How long would it take? Uh, on average, they say that a ransomware recovery takes three weeks and that's a good number, which to me is horrifying because I, I just think about a business being down for three weeks and that seems devastating monetarily, uh, then the downside, like the, the other end of that is three months is, is kind of where the, the worst case scenarios fall in and businesses just can't be down for three months. So what is your confidence that you can actually recover with your current setup the way it is today? When was the last time you tested it? You ran through that recovery and how long did it take? And then what's your frustration? You've gone through the exercise, you've tested it, you, you, you know, I'm 90% sure we'll get out okay, but is managing it, is continuing to keep up with this something that is acceptable to you? Is that, is that comfortable? Is that what you want to keep doing? Is this the job you signed up for? And if you can ask yourself those questions and you can confidently answer them, then I would say, you know, you're in a good spot. But if there is hesitation, if there is concern, then it's time to think about maybe upgrading your backup storage or looking at how you can improve that environment and make it more zero trust data resilient because we don't want to see anyone fail, whether they, they go with object first and Veeam or not. We don't want to see ransomware win because when, when attackers win, everybody loses. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of asking those questions and, and taking the time to find those answers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild out there. It's, 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 it's getting more and more threatening by the minute and uh, layer in AI and all the other sophisticated attacks that can come at basically everybody within your organization and the uh, the paths are remarkably um, plentiful for bad yep. actors. So um, peace of mind, 
that's what I wish for everyone in, uh, in 2024 and beyond. Uh, this has been great. Anthony, very much appreciated. Uh, great presentation. Uh, thanks for being on. We very much look forward to keeping track of Object First and Veeam and, and, uh, and covering the Veeam on events uh, all throughout the year. Um, but uh, look forward to talking to you again in the future, but best of luck for the rest of the year. Thank you, Doug. It's great. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.